Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Good morning, afternoon, all the above. I'm Chris Coates. Randy Filio. And this is Spotlight Keen. And, uh, We're back again. Yep, for another show. Yep. Got a lot con- to talk our, about. Our yeah. contract got renewed. Our salaries got confirmed. Yeah. You know, yeah zero wish. times zero. We yeah. work for cheap. Yeah. Um, got a lot to talk about. Uh, I want to start off with, though, um, did, you, uh, did you or anybody out there watch the uh, Grammys the other day? You know, it's, it's funny, Chris, because... You probably were in sleep back then, right? I actually stayed up, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, the last couple of years, it was just like, man, you know, I didn't enjoy the Grammys at all. Actually didn't even know any of the performers, because I guess I'm getting a little older. Right. But we watched this one. You know, and a lot of it, like a lot of people are curious for the, the Taylor Swift part of it. It's yeah. like, you know, but all in all... I, I thought it was an excellent presentation. You know, they had, I guess, some throwback singers that we would more relate to. But um, I, I thought the whole production of the Grammys this year was excellent. And, you know, bringing back some uh, some old stars, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I thought they did a phenomenal job. And, yes, I stayed up till 11 o'clock, damn it. <laughs> you know? No, I, I, I enjoyed some of it. Um, some of it I, I thought was you know, I, I really I was flipping back and forth. There was three people I wanted to see. Um, Tracy Chapman I thought was outstanding. Yep. I love Fast Car, and the duet was just perfect. Um, and she has such a great smile. I mean, just to think about it, she was found on um, what is it, Harvard Square, or Cambridge Square, down down in that that area, playing guitar on a corner. Yep. And everything then became a, a different reality with when somebody signed her and she did the music she did. Joni Mitchell. I mean, I watched the Newport. If you ever go on, on YouTube, you do the Newport Jazz Festival, Joni Mitchell. And, you know, the, coming back, where, yeah, that, that's where that's what the award she got was for, like, um, it was a Grammy for, for her performance there. And, um, but that was... That was amazing. Well, Joni I mean, Mitchell, Joni Mitchell and that the, just makes you cry. Well, she had a stroke a while back, and she couldn't even speak. And aneurysm, right? Yeah, couldn't even speak. And then she comes back, learns to speak, learns to sing, and actually had a good voice at, how old is she, 80, 81? 80. And um, phenomenal job. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Then and, you had the old rocker, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, Billy Joel I and mean, he can still sing, man. He yep. can still he can still do it, and so that that stuff was great. You know, I thought that that was really entertaining. I will tell. Uh, did you did you get down to the ice festival? I did not. So you have to tell me if you did, because you have to tell me what it was like and stuff. I had to go to a funeral instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it went. The, what there, there was there was ice carvers. Yeah. Um, one complaint that I heard very well packed. I mean packed. Yeah. It, it was by far the best attended ice festival I've seen down there. I mean, it was jammed. One complaint I heard that they might have to look at it next year. It was so packed that people crossing the streets were ignoring the lights. Yeah. I heard that, that, that they were I, just walking out. Actually, so they might need a couple of officers or somebody doing traffic control next year I, to I, have people wait to the walk lights. I went, to, walk. I went to Muse on, uh, sat on Sunday. I went to Muse. For lunch, and um, some of the people are, that that were there uh, came in. And you, when you sit in the window, people all of a sudden wave, and the next thing you know, they come into the table and they talk. And some some people came in, and they were we asked them about it, and they said, "Yeah," and they said exactly what you said that they're going to have to take a look at maybe changing things up a little bit with with people just really you know walking across the street because somebody's going to get hit right. somebody's going to get frustrated or something like that or a child's going to all of a sudden pull away from their parent and so they they should really think about closing it that's that is that's what i did here yep. um you because know, it got so busy it's yeah. becoming so so there's a couple of ways to look at it one you might you know the a they might either have to have police officers or traffic control downtown yeah or we might have to do uh, kind of what they do with the pride festival and a couple of the others make the footprint smaller yeah um and maybe just have it around central square yeah you know and the traffic on, on the lower parts of main street stays the same yeah but you actually and i think that's what they're going to have to do yeah and then i mean people will still you know just like the pride festival they're still going to go in and shop the shops and the restaurants yeah. but maybe just keep the ice sculptures up on central square right and allow people to actually walk in the street 
Yeah. I think that's where they're heading for because, yeah, the good news was it was packed. The bad news was it was really packed. Yeah. Well, it's and it was it, nice it was weather. obvious. But with it was obvious on Friday night, um, and and on Sunday, seeing people out and about, and you didn't know anybody. Yeah. That's always, always. I mean, not that I didn't know anybody. I, I there were people, but there was a lot of people I had no idea. So that means that they're visitors, and a lot of them uh, they had young um, men or women with them that had Keene State College. Um, sweatshirts on yeah so i was wondering if like keen state college made it a thing that the, this was going on to have their families come up and enjoy you know family time together or for students that were thinking about attending keen state college was this a big big weekend for them and did they have a home get basketball game i mean look at the keen state college basketball you know, team right now i mean you know yeah. and and with the the individual that was just named to the top 25 best uh, division three players in the country, in the country yeah. i mean it, it's just amazing to me so it was it sounded like it was a good weekend no keen state did have uh um, basketball games on saturday yeah and um, they also had hockey games and and keen high had hockey games also so there was a lot going on at the same time well you know what's 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 uh, exciting for me is that uh keen keen high's basketball and hockey programs are are the that 500 one game over kind of thing right now competitive. Uh, so they're competitive right yeah. there and that's always entertaining i mean if i've always always said if 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 they're competitive you have a chance to win yep. that's all that's all you need is just to be competitive yeah, and, and lower you know doesn't get as much press as the the keen ski teams um you know cr uh, cross country and uh and downhill both doing very well unfortunately the the best female skier on the keen high team she's a junior she's my niece Anna Dumont, one of the top skiers in the state. Um, is that Bobby's? Yeah, Bob's okay. daughter, of course, right? Yeah. Bob. Anyhow, unfortunately, on Sunday, she was doing some, she also teaches as a junior. She was up at Crotch Mountain, is on a back trail, was coming down and hit a patch of ice, and one ski went out, and unfortunately, she was right near an old pole and hit it and broke her femur in three places. No kidding. She's in a cast from her hip. To her toes. Oh my lord! Yeah, season's over, obviously. Yeah, that's and, gonna be um, a little rehab. Yeah, a little bit of I rehab. What if they had there. to put a um, uh, um, titanium? D didn't something. need, didn't need surgery. Wow. Fortunate there. Wow. Um, but um, yeah, and it was a back trail. Nobody was around her. She does like her father Bob. Yeah. Goes off and skis by herself because she's such a superb skier. Fortunately, in today's radio? day and age, she was way in the back trail. She had her cell phone on her. Yeah. And called. And a friend, they sent up a ski patrol and it was over at Crotchy Mountain, so they took her to the Peterborough Hospital. And yeah. Wow. So, yeah, unfortunately, her obviously her season's over, but, you know, she's tough. You know, she's she's tough. And uh, she'll she'll recover, but yeah. it won't be this year. It'll be it'll be laid up, and uh, I, I can't imagine having a cast all the way from your top of your thigh to your toes. Yeah, well, Bobby's been a skier all his life. Oh, he was, yeah, he was born yeah. with skis. Yeah, yeah. He, had, he had trouble yeah. giving birth because the skis got in the way a little <laughs> bit. But um, yeah, yeah, he teaches up at uh, and he's you know Bob's always been he's up at Granite Gorge, giving mm -hmm. lessons up there too. And you know my wife Holly's an ex excellent skier, and and then there's me. Yeah, I I got to the point where I can make it down the hill. Yeah, you know a very small hill and not a very steep hill. But now I was never the uh, the great winter sport person outside of my old. My old sleds with the steel runners like you and I used to have. And that was about it for my winter sports. Yeah, my I, I hadn't been on skis, or I, as I say, I hadn't been on the boards um, for eight, nine years. And this this Christmas, I went skiing. I, I said to my son-in-law, I said, it may not be pretty, or it could be a disaster. That's the best it's going to be. Yeah. And he's like, he got behind me at one point, he's, and I'm skiing, he's like, you know, actually, you, you got great rhythm, and I'm like, it's the skis. <laughs> it's it is because the skis nowadays, compared to what they were, oh, yeah. are two different worlds. The ones that I had were so heavy, so yeah. long, and yeah. so heavy. Yeah. So, so these, you know, just making it cut, you know, the cut in the just, it was just easy. So, see, I could have been an excellent skier. It was the damn skis, Chris. I'm telling that's you, like it, I always, it wasn't me. That's like I always say um, that I was probably I was NFL. NFL NHL caliber goalie at yeah. Robin Hood Park. It's just that I couldn't skate. I I wore boots. Yeah, same with me. I could stop everything on boots. You want to go back <laughs> in history and dig out through the old history books? You know, go to the old 
floor hockey league at the rec center back when I was at Roosevelt School. I think yeah. I'm still on the record book there. But um, yeah, then they said, well, real hockey have skates, and I'm like, well, that screws things up. Yeah. And that was the end of my hockey career. So let's let's dig in. Let's let's talk about uh, you were Stuff. busy on Saturday. You you uh, well you Saturday weren't that you, you weren't that busy. You guys what? How long were you there? Uh, a little over two hours. All right, that's that's average. That's average. That's not a bad meeting. Yeah, it was all because of the first article. After that, yeah. it was over in about five minutes. But. Yeah. So the first article, um, and this we're talking about the Keene School District, and and Randy sits on the on the school board. So, it, is your term up? This year? Nope. Next no, year? Another year to go. Yeah, another yep. year to go? Yep. Um, and you've got actually three city councilors on there, right? On the school board, yeah. Yeah. And yep. so you got Raleigh and Chris Roberts. Right. Raleigh Almarad and, and, and Chris right. Roberts. Yep. And so you guys can be blamed for for, yep. for at least two levels of, 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 of bumping up my taxes, right? Yep. Yep, and then they can find the real cause of it, and that's the county, um, which... Well, yeah, you, know, you want to go down that road? <laughs> you really want to go down that road? Um, well, you know what, it's always what easier. What the taxes to be raised from the county last year? The, oh, yeah, the easiest thing we always do is just blame the state. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Blame yeah. the state. That's right. You know, so... Yeah. Now, but yep. So let's let's start with the, the Article 1, which is the main budget. So it was to approve a $75,686,255 million uh, budget. Yep. And that was an increase of what? Um, let me see. Uh, default budget. Oh, and, and also to approve that if you don't, when you go to vote, if you don't um, approve it, it's a $74 million and change. So basically what happened, Chris, was, yeah, we had, you know, we had that budget there. Yeah. And obviously it is an increase. Um, last year the voters approved um teachers pay raises yeah. you know which obviously it goes up over three or four years um uh, but one of the issues that the only reason the uh, meeting took two hours instead of 15 minutes is was the majority of those in attendance voted to add another five hundred thousand dollars to the budget for, for special ed for special ed um that you guys had cut out right? positions well you took the you took the the advice of the of leadership. Right, exactly. What they showed was, and the reason that the board went with is actually three less teachers in three schools because the fourth school didn't even ask for the teacher. But you know, the voters decided to put it back in anyhow. The other three, as we showed, we have a screen like this behind us. We showed that when COVID hit, all the well, at least three other schools got an extra special needs teacher because social st emotional st students with social needs went up covid just raised havoc yeah what we were showing was now from covid 21 22 the numbers of special needs students came back down to pre covid levels so all the administration of the board was doing was going back to pre covid levels it really wasn't eliminating somebody for the sake of eliminating them it was just saying that position doesn't need to be filled because we're at a level prior to COVID, um, but those. But, but was the argument was the argument that their their levels are going back down with the numbers that we have in place? And if you take those numbers away, you could see a spike up because you're losing people that are now currently helping with those situations. Is right. that the argument? Yeah, it, it was. I mean, and, and for every for every action, there's a reaction. For every argument, there's a counter argument. No, you know. Yeah. And uh, so nobody's really wrong per se when you mm -hmm. look at how you want to look at a figure and you justify it your way i mean as a board member you can kind of see it both ways mm -hmm. but you also see it from a taxpayer's point of view yeah um it's like okay uh, when the numbers spike you added it and when the numbers come down you take it away yeah so but in the end i mean there was only about 80 people there and Two thirds voted to put the five hundred thousand back in, but that doesn't. What I mean, that must have been explained to them that that five hundred thousand doesn't mean it goes towards that, right? Right. It, it, it was made, very it well can explained. Be. Right. No, it was very well explained, and the question was asked, and the moderator answered it. And who is um, the moderator now? Kathy. Okay. Donald's still the yep. moderator. Does All a very right. good job. She does. George Downing, the chair of of our school board, explained that, yeah, by law, um, we don't have to put that $500,000 where you want it. But the school board has always said, if that's the wishes of the voting community and that's what you're saying, that's where we'll put it. 
We're not going to be arrogant and say, oh, gave us 500 grand, we're going to put it somewhere else. No, we will do what the voters say to do. Mm-hmm. But now it goes to the uh, to a vote in March at the rec center. And the concern of some of us on the board was, if you vote no on the budget, it goes back to the default budget. Well, the default budget with that 500,000 added on, the default budget would be about a million three, million four or less. Our concern is that extra money might entice some taxpayers to say, you know what, we're going to go to the default budget and save a million three. The, if they do that, the problem that's going to face the school board is not only do you lose that 500000 that they put in, mm-hmm. now we've got to cut another 800000 mm-hmm. Where does that come from? And that could be, you know, I don't uh, like to use the word hey, catastrophic, but it'll be significant. My first year, we had to cut $1.6 million because they went to the default budget. Well, they must have cut your salary. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. That, <laughs> the, that was, yeah, it, it, it is. And that's and what it, happens. And it's and it's dangerous so it is right. dangerous and and then you're really cutting in there's not a lot of and i know people like to think there's a lot of fat in these budgets um there's not and you know as we've seen in the courts the courts have ruled that the state of new hampshire underfunds public schools dramatically not just a little bit dramatically and what is the republican controlled state legislature saying to the court's ruling we're going to ignore it like they always do well, I mean, look at Claremont was passed when, you know. How many years ago? Yeah, and, and 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 now Conval just won its case. Right. And um, But I'll, there's no enforcement. There's no enforcement. The, the, the courts can rule well, you know, all they want, and the legislature just ignores it. Yeah. I mean, there was an interesting thing this week. There was a, a bill that would take all social-emotional learning out of the schools. Yeah, not, it's not, you know, it's, what it's, does that mean? It, 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 what it would mean is that, that you couldn't, like, I mean, they said they only want you to teach this, this, this. No, you know. No emotion. Yeah, yeah. no, like, they, the kids don't aren't coming to you in need. And, and you, you know, that they can't learn how to work together. And, you know, I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. And it's just, I wish they'd just allow public education to do what they need to do. I mean, it's worked for, it's worked for so many. Yep. You know, if you, and if people choose to go to a different school, that's fine. I have no issue with that. When I was chair of the school board, I had a working relationship with the, um, the, the executive director of the Surrey Village Charter School because I felt it was important to have that relationship. Got to have communication, you know, and and yep. open communication. And, and so you know, maybe two times a year we 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 would have a conversation, and that that was all we needed to do. But it was so that they understood, especially when at the time their students hurt hit a certain grade, then they were coming to Keene High School. You know, eighth right. grade they'd come to Keene High School afterwards, and so it was important to have that those discussions to see if there was anything we could do to support that. Yeah, you know, so it, it it's 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 interesting. I still say one of the biggest weaknesses of the Keene School District, and it has been for a while, is we don't tell our story. There's so many great stories that right. can be told. You know, yes, the Sentinel does some articles about sports things that are going on, but there's so many cool things that are happening in our schools that we should be really well, you know, and about teachers, not just students, but teachers too. No, you're right. And I mean, just look at it from the, the political point of view. When um, elections come up for city councilors, six months out or whatever, it's it's in the news all week long, you know, a couple times a week. These councilors are up for re-election. These people are going to run. School board, we have three members coming up. You know, people don't even know who the three members that are coming up. They don't know anything about the terms. They don't know when to submit. There, there's just no press on it whatsoever, mm-hmm. you know. And um, you're right. And the the school budget so obviously exceeds the uh, city budget and the county budget. It just doesn't get the press. Yeah. Both ways. You know, I don't think we get our feet held to the fire, which is fine. You know, I don't mind my feet being held to the fire because I always defend whatever my vote is. Mm-hmm. People are agree or disagree, but I'll I'll defend it. Um, but city council, I mean. You know, our feet are held to the fire every day. You know, speaking of city council, I mean, 
downtown projects coming up again, and you want to see something that's going to get media attention and time. Well, I mean, I, I want to I want to jump to there. In we'll a, jump a, that in, after. In, in a few minutes because yeah. there's been another bump up in cost, and I want to understand that a little bit more because we went from what seven million to fourteen million now to sixteen million, and so I just want to understand why that's that is. Ten million among friends. Come on. Yeah. All right. So um, you had negotiations for the custodians. Um, and that what you know what I don't like in the motion is that I wish they would just give you the percentage of increase all along the way. Then there's no percentages of increases well, it, in here. You know, it, it's so funny. what at the end of the day, what is what is the percentage of increase from last year to this year? Is it three point something? Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to get you the final number on that. One of the things we talked about percentages too that sometimes can be skewed is like you have things like you know custodians and in some smaller professional groups. And you talk percentage, and you might have said, oh, it went up 10%, which sounds huge. But the dollar figure, because there's only a handful of people there, might have been very small. Yeah, I mean, the impact, so sometimes the impact of some of these is, I mean, all of them. This is, this is this These are the contracts, when you negotiate them, that they're easier to swallow because they're all small overall. I mean, the Dollar-wise, they're small, they're, relatively you know, speaking. I mean, you know, keen office professionals in the first year is $56,000, in the final year is 32000 Right. I mean, in the scheme of things, yes, it's an increase, but in the scheme of things, it's not. Dollar-wise, it's small. Yeah. yeah. But, and then it's uh, uh, unexpected fund balance transfer to billing, building maintenance fund of $200,000. And so that, do you know where that stands, what that, where that fund stands currently? I don't have the exact number right here in front what of me. The, I what, don't. What, what, what? I'm asking these questions, man. God, don't only ask questions I have the answer to right in front of you. <laughs> All right. All right. So those it's, are it's two. Actually, I the, want, the building fund. The building fund's two, holding current. Um, the, I mean, do you guys have a? Do you guys have an area that you want to get it to? You know, like 1.5 million or 500 thousand or. You, you know, at this point, Chris, I'd like I'd like to see it get to you know at least a half million in reserve. Um, that's one of the issues that scares me now about a default budget. If you got a default budget, you can pretty much kiss that goodbye. Well, and I you think pe I think people need to understand that, like, a few years ago, we had a uh, maintenance fund that we put monies into, and people are like, "Wow, that's really you know getting up there." It's well, yeah, that's because we took the the the, clo uh, the purchase of the selling of the Keene old Keen Middle School and put it into that fund. And guess what? A boiler, two, two, the two boiler systems out at Keene High School went right. down, and we had to replace. And that was like a eight hundred thousand dollar cost, like that. But yeah. we had that fund. You could have it in reserve. So it's always nice to have some level. My right. always concern is how much is enough and how much is too much. Right. Yeah. You got to try to justify. You know, I think that's a good point. You justify it. How much is it if we lose a boiler? Yeah. Because they'll usually go right in the middle of the winter. You know, they're not going to, something is not going to go on an ideal day. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, and they've had pipe bursts out there. And yeah. I think that was kind of connected with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you have to have monies in reserve, which going back again, that's where it concerns me. If we go to the default budget and we've got to, you know, cut another $800,000. Yeah. I mean, where does it come from? Yeah. I have no idea. Well, you have to remember this, that 80 to 85% of any of the municipal's budgets are staff and healthcare. Oh yeah, yeah. So that 20 to 15% that's left are things that you're gonna look at. What I've been trying to get done, which is a non-teacher issue, and, um, that gets a lot of usage now is the bathrooms at alumni field, at the baseball field. They've been there since the 50s. They're yeah. the same bathrooms. And um, yeah, oh yeah. That the alumni field now between you know high school and tournaments and the swamp bats brings a ton of revenue into the city. Yeah. Um, but the bathrooms they kind of remind me when they had the old ice arena down in Swansea. Those bathrooms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people come in from out of town for tournaments, whatever, and they go into these bathrooms. They're like, really, you know. Um, so one, and I actually, I just got. Um, I get bumped up that I'm actually chairman of the uh, Buildings and Facilities Committee now for All the right. school board. It's like, oh, this is what I needed, another, you know, an another, uh, another headache to have to deal with. Um, but that's one area that I'm trying to do is get those bathrooms fixed up now, you know, whether there's um, some grants out there, some monies outside of the tax base, I'm looking for it. 
Um, but I'll meet with the supervisor of grounds, you know, Ken Dooley tonight. Yeah. Actually, I, have a, I have a school committee meeting tonight just to discuss that. Um, and I'm trying to get the bathrooms fixed because they're just, I mean, they're an embarrassment. I mean, a guy, I guess, you know, men were like, yeah, whatever. You know, we've been in some pretty bad bathrooms. Women don't want to go into a bad bathroom. You know, they just don't. You know, go to a restaurant or something sometime and the, the ladies' room is in disrepair. Your wife's not going to want to go there anymore. So that's the same with alumni field. So we need to upgrade the bathrooms. But once again, you know, that's kind of at the tail end of the spectrum as far as where the dollars are. Yeah. So, you know, that's a concern. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that. I, I want to get them fixed. I want, um, you know, the people to come to Keene. Um, to come to the tournaments because literally if you have bad bathrooms um, you can't host things you can't host things like nope i mean you nope. can't you can hold like the connecticut valley uh cross country meet we can you can do some of those but i actually think some, some of those in the past if the and i could be wrong have been um held at the middle school and if it's middle school the track's close enough to go into the building but at the Keene high school you need it alumni field is way out yeah um you know it wasn't that long ago where you couldn't have any type of um, ice hockey tournaments in town. Nothing. Because of the barn. Because the, we had the barn. And now Keene State in um, the uh, the school, the university system, is putting a million dollars into Keene Ice yeah. to build new uh, new locker rooms. Correct. And once again, now we're going to get more of a draw with people coming into Keene. And when they come into Keene, they spend money. Yeah. So... Anyhow, it's all connected. You, you know, it's funny. You don't think about it that much, but but the key is you got to have bathrooms. The key is and in, in, uh, is that eighty people came yeah. out. I would have come out. I would have been there, but I again went to a funeral. But but um, eighty people, and that's been the norm for a long time. Eighty to one hundred and twenty is about yeah. what you get. Yeah. Um, I mean, literally, and we're is, in the auditorium, and I'm looking out at the crowd. Which is dangerous. It, it is it, dangerous. It be could be very. It could be very dangerous. Of course, you know I mean, the, the um, free keeners now they're they're relatively dissolved compared to what they used to be, but you can get a group in there and get enough for a majority and swing. What things. was it? Was it Limster Unity? Cro Croyd. Oh, Croyd, 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 New Hampshire, where you know somebody came in and they were able to pass something, and it was devastating to the point where they had to come back and do uh, and do you know throw the person. I mean, just re redo everything all over again down the road. But it was devastating in the meantime. I always say silence is never an option. And you know, once you go quiet on something, yeah. you know, um, yeah, I looked out at the crowd, or I could say lack of crowd, and we're starting the meeting, and I'm looking out, and it was virtually, I'm looking at an auditorium of empty seats. Ted Parent there? Nope. Oh, man, that's... He wasn't there, he's and you couldn't make it, so that cut about an hour off the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's move on. You guys also have the capital improvement program that you're now in the midst as you prep for this yep, city switching budget. budgets, that's, that's the city, yeah. Yeah, and Actually, so... Um, What's today? We're doing this on Tuesday. So Thursday night, Public Works comes in, and that's usually the most expensive. You know, we talked about it the, the other night that, you know, you look at things at, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. I mean, and we talk about the boiler going at the high school. You know, this year down um, on Martell Court where the uh, water treatment comes through, they had, we had a massive failure. Yeah. And, um, those aren't cheap. No. You know, a valve, a valve, $100,000, just like that. Well, we have, we you have, know? I have a water sewers plant up at the nursing home. So I know all about all of that. They ain't cheap. Yeah. And, um, and that's not the first time Martel Corp's had some issues. No, it's, it's old. Pet, or where we've had to upgrade certain things. It, it, and, it's old. So, yeah. And, and one of the things that used to, or still does mess things up, the old non flushable wipes that people flush. Yeah, it would go in and jam up the equipment to yeah. the point where you know you get motors moving and they get jammed up. And well, they burn out. They burn out and motors blow. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that's coming up. So this week. So that that's where you usually get a a bigger hit, but you have a big hit in this one. Yep. And I said it earlier. You have, and the Sentinel reported it that you have um, the downtown plan that went from seven million. Initially, if I remember correctly, correct me right. if I'm wrong. No, you're right. That was the original, 14, the original estimate. If the 14 million to now 16 point something, eight right. or something like that. Right. And so, my first question 
Let's take a step back. So you you come together. Do you take a tour of the projects? Do you visually go well, down you, to the you, places? You, capital Improvements Program now, we used to take a bus ride yeah. going around places. We don't now because half the time the, the windows would be fogged up. Or, yeah. So what they do now is this year we went to Hebert and Hall, and they just set up displays all, all over, over the place. Very good. And then they have the department head yeah. sitting at that display. And four or five years, we'll move around from display to display, and they'll explain it, and then you can ask questions there. And for those maybe newer counselors that actually haven't gone to, say, the fire station or the water treatment plant, um, you can talk to the department head and get a tour. Yeah. They'll take you down. And show. I've been to all of those, as you have. Yeah. Some of the newer counselors haven't. Yeah. So, yeah, it's usually done within Hebert and Hall, um, and um, not like the old bus rides we used to do. But So... And I hope that you, as being a the old guy, no, uh, well, being the east side of Keene kind of yep. guy, or, yep. met with those neighbors last night. Um, I hope that you uh, advocate for Robin Hood Park oh, because yeah. all too often, if a budget is going to be um, a problematic budget year, you're not going to cut police, you're not going to cut fire, you're going to think twice about public works before you make a cut. So where are you going to cut? The easy hanging fruit is usually, well, we're going to have to push that off for a year and mm -hmm. another year and another year. The one thing at Robin Hood Park that won't get pushed off will be, we don't need the new pool. We can reline it and it'll last us 10 years. That's good go. news. That's good. That's good news. Um, you know, the rest of it, um, and there's nobody better than going after Grants than Andy Bohannon, yeah. director of Parks and Rec. So... I mean, I've seen all the proposals that they put out for Robin Hood Park. Some, I think, you know, maybe a little bit overdone. But if the grants are there, Go okay, Go then fine. Unless, so, there's, unless there's legacy costs, yeah. you know, ongoing costs that you have to think about. But otherwise, go for it. Right. You know, it, it, and even with legacy costs, if it's within the reasonable thought, then you can do it. Well, you know, two things we need, definitely, is, in my opinion, anyhow, you need the pool open for the east side. You yeah. can't go... Everybody busing can't go to busing, Wheeler Park. Busing them over to... Yeah, that's, that's or, just, no. that doesn't work. The good news was we found out we can fix it without replacing it. The second one is uh, the bathrooms up there yeah. and that you know little community center part down there. Yeah. That's in disrepair. That needs to be replaced. Then for me, from there, then it's just a matter of if monies are available. Yeah. You know, we, we go from there. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that I used to enjoy, um, even though I was a terrible skater, but I... I could kind of sort of skate was the events we used to have up at Robin Hood Park. They'd light the arena at night. They'd all have all kinds of skating and outdoor hockey. Pond doesn't freeze anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, we're right now, here we are, you know, getting towards, you know, end of the first week of February, and it doesn't look like it'll get open. It's going to be in the 50s again this weekend. Yeah. And um, so they've been doing little things like flooding areas out at Wheelock Park, you know, where you only have, need a couple of inches of ice. I would, I would always say, Go to Strawberry Bank in Portsmouth, and they've got that little rink over little there. Little outdoor rink, yeah. And, and I would love to see something like that um, in, in front of the uh, Keene Parks and Rec. I think that would be really cool. That'd be cool. I mean, they have plenty of room at Wheelock Park, but once again, we have the east side. I mean, who's to say maybe next year, if it looks like we're never going to get the Robin Hood Pond open again because of, of climate yeah. change, yeah. maybe we go down to uh, Pat Russell Park now and maybe flood part of the uh, the rugby field and turn it into an ice rink. Yeah. I mean, there's all those things that we could look at. So, yeah. But no, I agree with you on the Robin Hood Park, but a lot of it's going to have to do with the money is there, which brings us back to the downtown project. Um how to go from 7 to 17. Well, as you know, I've been kind of a vocal critic of how this whole project's been handled. Um, still am. Um, uh, new mayors come in, and I think that settled things down quite a bit. Um, the 7 was never, in my opinion, a real number. Um, I, I looked at that, and I had a couple of engineers get a hold of me that weren't involved with the project, just engineers that knew Keen. I know one of them contacted you, Chris. Yeah. And he gets to me and he goes, no, he goes, that's the minimum of a $14 million project, I'll tell you right now. And he was right. And the, like the next estimate that came through was, yep, yeah, it's $14 million. Um, now, obviously, you get some inflation, you get, you know, some increases on, uh, you know, on, on, on parts and pieces and materials. Um, but going out looking for grants now, 
And hopefully they find him because. Well, that's what it is. What are they? What are they saying is the percentage of grants that they think they can get for this? Well, I mean, I are they I, saying I, that they can cover fifty percent of the project? Uh, I, I, you know, Chris, I, I honestly take all that right now with a grain of salt. Because I'm the not more, saying the I don't more they, the more they go up for grants. Does that push out the project that much more, which means that inflation is only going to... I don't think so. And when I say inflation, it's not the same type of inflation that I'm talking about. It's just right. cost. You know, every year, there's a little bit more cost. Yeah, yeah, of course. But interest rates are coming down a little bit, so that might that might offset each other. And I'm never worried about, oh, the pipes are all going to blow now. Yeah, some of them are 100 years old. Well, if things get delayed a year, that means they're 101 years. I mean, that's a risk that no, you take. No, how I look at it is that there's going to be um, a different color pavement wherever that went because they're going to have to dig it up, replace it, and then move forward. Because that's what they've been doing for years now. Right. Well, and, you know, a lot of it, too, is you don't really know what's down there. Do they? You know? Do they? Um, it's been a long time since we've replaced the, the surface in the 80s, but yeah. they haven't gone way down into the infrastructure. CIP um, also tell you what the roads are going to be done? Uh, I'll have to look. I, it, was, it, was just, it was just updated, um, some of the roads that were going to be done. I don't have the list here right now. Man, but, but, now it, I've asked three questions. Well, you're asking the wrong questions. Um, <laughs> so, so the answer is yes. I don't think when, when the capital improvements, when this was printed, um, it changed. Of course, Public Works goes out and they'll look at some of the roads, and and one of them will just have deteriorated faster over the winter. Yeah. And you know they'll go in and do it. One road that's planned to be done that everybody asks me about is Marlboro Street. Um, because you go down there now, I'll come back from a Keene High hockey game or a Keene State hockey game, and the cars come down at night. You see the headlights doing yeah. this, yeah. and you're like. What the hell is that? Well, it's hitting all the bumps. That was because the the project ran a little bit higher than estimate, and the state didn't, or the state said they didn't have any extra money to finish paying for it. Yeah. So we're waiting for the state to finish paying for it. That looks like this year, and yeah. that that's a major project. But yeah, there's some there's some roads out there. We've definitely um, the the sidewalk project's totally being redone because there's some that have been on there 20 years and they've just they've dropped it and. We're looking at all over again, and now we're going to be having a new public works director, and you know, a fresh set of eyes will probably come in. Any decision been made yet? No. No. Looking. Like, like you, you don't have any like inside skinny that you you know may know and 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 just tell me, and you no one else will know. I won't. Nobody say else it. out there yeah. is listening. <laughs> um, no, and quite honestly, I, I I haven't dug into it all that. The city manager will come forward and say, yeah. we hired somebody inside or we brought in somebody outside. Yeah. Good news was we hired two more police officers. So we're only down five now. We were down 10. Yeah. So it's like, but you know, the problem there is we have a, a bunch that are eligible for retirement too. Well, and, and the other thing is, is I wonder where these guys are coming from. Like, did you take from one place, you know, like a town or something like that? Now, from what I heard, the two that just started were new. Oh, good. Um, yeah, everybody's trying to pill for everybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's, it's crazy. It's the way it is. And and we're we understand at the county level with the Department of Corrections that there are some people that want the want to do the work as a lifetime job, and there are some people that this is a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a feeder system for for somebody like the Keene uh, Keene Police Department, this, uh, New Hampshire State State Troopers, or whatever it may be, which is fine by us. But I'm always like, all right, did you just take one of our guys? <laughs> so yeah, the, well, the the, the, the worst ones now are ones that never used to pilfer, and that's the state police. So, how, but they're they're state police are way down. How close are you? Like this this group that's overseeing this whole downtown project, right? How close are you to moving forward with doing anything? Like, where does it stand? I don't pretend to understand. You made some decisions, but did you really make decisions? Now that you have an, uh, a new mayor in there, does that new public uh, works and, and, and a new and a, and a new council in theory? Right. So, is there reconsideration of where things are? I mean, what, how do you proceed? I don't understand. Well, right now, what really got approved was a conceptual design, and that's all it was was conceptual. We kind of agreed majority wise. So nothing, basically. So how does it, if I'm paying somebody to do a conceptual design? But it's only conceptual. Are they actually working on it? And are they gonna? Are you gonna pay them money to do conceptual? Then all of a sudden change because it's only conceptual. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, it, are we throwing with, money? Uh, you they know. will come back with a conceptual design, and I've got the dates here right now too. Um, that 
they will come back and say your conceptual design works here because or your conceptual design on an engineer's opinion doesn't work here because yeah or we could do it cheaper here so the conceptual now goes from you know kind of like a, a pencil with an eraser we bring it down to kind of like an ink pen yeah will well, this work well so, and, and do, do, do they also have directions around like um because i've heard i've heard people talking about you know we're taking trees out and especially down the middle of, of, of the of the road uh, we're taking parking out down the middle of the road which some people feel is not the best thing to do mm -hmm. the bicycle lane should they stay should they go are these things all being discussed internally they will be well and then by the council after the fact yeah what's going to happen is coming up in and does it go what, what committee does it go to MSFI oh. comes back oh. comes back to moi um, so basically what is going to happen now, now as you're aware, MSFI now only meets once a month. That mm -hmm. can change a little while ago. Well, starting in March, we're back to twice a month. So the second Tuesday, or excuse me, the second Wednesday of March, April, and May, yeah. and that may go longer than that, yeah. will be just to discuss the downtown project. Yeah. And then our regular meeting, the fourth Wednesday of the month, will be for everything else. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, so that begins in March. On March 6th, um, it's a ways off, so you'll mark your calendars later. March 6th at the rec center. Um, so that's going to be a week before MSFI meets. So March 6th, there'll be two sessions, one from 3 to 4.30, one from 5.30 to 7. And basically what that's going to be is a workshop for citizens to go in and say, this is the conceptual on this part of the project that's going to go to MSFI next week. What do you think? So the public's going to have... So all I have to do is walk across the street? Yeah, we made it really convenient for you. Thank it you. was going to be farther away, that. but I said, you know... <laughs> yeah, Chris we, can only walk so We're going to make it convenient for Chris. So that'll be on March 6th, March 6th, April 3rd, May 1st. So for three months, we're looking at the downtown project in phases, and yeah. that's how it's going to be discussed at the rec center, and then it will come back to committee. So is it, is it something that actually has any level of impact at the citizens' talk? It the, felt the, yes. some people felt like this is what I heard last time. Is some people felt like there was a lot of pushback in that they weren't being heard. Now oh, I, I said to them, I, I, I said to some of these people that well, I don't agree with that because if I look at, I look at where they started to where they ended, it may be that you didn't get everything you wanted, but right. they changed a lot of things radically because. It wasn't going to be a, a, a going yeah, through. Yeah, Central was, Square wasn't going to be Central yeah. Square anymore. So I, I so like I, I tried to make sure they understood that your voice did have something, some level of impact. Maybe right. not to the level you wanted it to, but it did have some level of impact. So I'm, I just I say that because I think sometimes people feel like, why do why go to these things? I think you should go to these things. My complaint on this one was, you're absolutely right. The, the, the impact of the voters had everything to do with the change on this. Yeah. My argument was um, in why I was so angry with how it was being handled that it was being handled by staff and they avoided the MSFI committee. Yeah. It was it was more a behind the scenes project. Oh, I don't know about the behind scenes stuff. But. Well, um, my opinion was that the public wasn't even aware of it till after it was like, here the old, it is. The old, the train left the station. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. exactly what it was. This time around, um, we'll be it'll be way ahead of the game. Like I said, the public will have first dibs on it, March sixth. Two sessions, three to four thirty, and five thirty to seven. So if you work a night shift, you can go the day. If you work the day, you can do the night. It's, so it's, people will have their their opinion and their their comments on it. Is is I mean, I'm looking at this neighborhood parking project thing, and I'm switching thinking, gears a little bit. No, but I'm not really. Um, is there in that book a place where you're going to address a parking garage or a facility that may have parking downtown and also some other buildings in it and stuff like that? When is that going to be? Because I feel like all of a sudden we're going to be doing this downtown thing, and that's going to be $16 million. And then two or three years from now, we're going to be looking at another $20 million to do this parking garage. And I just would like to... I'd, I personally would like to get the full vision as a citizen and a taxpayer. I'd like to get the full vision of what? Because I think it's all needed, how it gets done, and, and, and the cost. And maybe 
and you know it, it's a whole different story. Yep. But but I just would like I would like to I would like to have you guys start to show me and tie me into what's this mean? Is is the arts quarter thing still on some levels on the table? Because I got something from Arts Alive the other day that says that there's maybe some still some opportunity for some of those things to happen. I'd just like to get the full vision. A lot of the problem right now is still th is privately owned land. And yeah. the, the city's still talking to make to answer the, the question of a parking deck, yes, that's still being looked at somewhere in the Gilbo Ave area. Yeah. We're still there's still discussions. Um, you, you can't really come out and say, hey, Here's our concept. Oh, it's on private property. Never mind. We haven't yeah. got an agreement for that yet. Yeah. So yes, um, I mean, my opinion is there will be a parking deck maybe in my lifetime. Um, my opinion is it will be on Gilbo Ave. Yeah. It's just a matter of you getting these private I, property owners to come to uh, some kind of an agreement. You know, when Email Ledger built in the Colony Mill, right? we talked about what the true downtown was and with that building of of, of uh, the colony mill, it 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 what um, it brought out a more de in depth view of the downtown area. Right. And then you flip it on the other side. You know, we had if you remember, Roxbury Street was was a dead street. Mm -hmm. It was a dead street. You know, really struggling. You know, with with buildings from Avishans to Junies to the Y to. Um, what was the grocery store? A and P. A and P. Thank you. You know, I mean, all those, all those buildings, and we didn't. Ha and the middle school was not uh, sold yet. Right. So now you look at it. Middle school sold. That's populated. It's it's bustling with schools and with with um, apartments. apartments and other things that are going on in there. There's yep. talk about a, a, you know, the possibility of putting a high end restaurant in there, or some sort of bar in there, of some sort. Don't know if that will ever come to fruition, but they've yep. been talked about it. Yep. You know, so that's all all out there. That's really had an impact. You know, the uh, and that's helped the store, um, Jake's Five Star. It's they it's, do a phenomenal and, job. And then you have you know Good Nose. Um, uh, what is it? The attorneys that used to have the right there are we and all that. That building has been re-energized. And then you've got Moco, and then you've got the whole rest of the street and Hannah Grimes with what they did there, and Twenty One and all these other. It's given depth, and then you go down yeah. to Cypress Street, where the food co-op and Southwest Community Services and other things are going on. Right. That gives us depth. On the flip side, you know, it, it let's can is there more that we can do to really make that connection out to Colony Mills, out to yeah. Elm City Brewery, like we've talked about in the past. You've got the development of, of vendors and um, all these other things down in that yeah. area. You know, does that you know by making that connection all the way through? All of a sudden, you have a, a even more thriving downtown area. Right. Because I will tell you, if you go to Portsmouth, and I went there two weekends ago, mm -hmm. and Portsmouth is the same side. Now, I get their wealth radius within 100 miles is completely different than ours. Yep. And they've got the seacoast. And I get all that. But they've got depth all the way around. Right. And they've got all kinds of different things going on there. And I just think the more we can build out and strengthen ourselves, the, the healthier we're going to be. And the more we can give um, parking to downtown, you know, not give, but they pay for it. But mm -hmm. for, for residents that are living downtown, it changes the the socioeconomic downtown a little bit, yeah. too. Well, that's what you have in front of you here, Chris. You have the downtown parking project. That's all going to be part of that. And that's what we're looking at. If we want people to live more downtown, we've got to free up parking. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're talking about that. How do we, you know, if you, if you want to increase more people living in the area, they have to have a place to park their car. Yeah. And so that is, it actually is a priority. Yeah. Um, and that's before MSFI also. We've got a yeah. lot of major uh, projects before us. But you are right, because if you look at Gilbo Ave and you, and you look horizontally to it, on one side is West Street yeah. running parallel. Yeah. You have Emerald Street running parallel. Right. And Emerald Street now is bustling, as you just pointed out. But that whole area between Emerald Street and West Street, yeah. namely Gilbo Ave, yeah. is so underdeveloped. So underdeveloped. Um, but you know what it also does, though? It puts pressure on, and I've seen some change over the last few years, which I think is healthy, too, on all those houses between Winchester Street and uh, 
Gilbo Ave, the housing for Keene State College students and all that. Some of that's changed, actually, right. especially with the population going down. It's gone, in, it's gone into single home residencies and other, other type of um, – so that's, that's been – but it puts pressure on all of a sudden we're bringing up the, the neighborhoods on some level. So I just think, you know, you've got brew bakers uh, uh, over there. You've got – you know, some fire dog other, breads. You know, far, yeah, all that, yeah. all that's going well, and yep. and even where um, uh, the plumbing used to be. What's the uh, yeah, economy um, plumbing? Yeah, um, yeah I don't, what is in there? Uh, Deborah Vest owns that building. Oh, yeah, yeah, she used to own uh, uh, Elm City. Elm City Brewery. Uh, she bought that building. Um, she has businesses in there right now. Yeah, that's what it looks she like. She repaved the parking lot. Looks great. She upgraded, put solar yeah. power down there. Yeah. So yeah, that's that would be right in the middle of the two. So. I mean, you are right. So, as far as what you said about the parking deck and stuff, it'll be Gilbo Ave at some point. It's just a matter of we got to find the property. And you have does the city build it, or do you find maybe a developer that'll come in? Because developers don't like to build parking decks because they're not profitable. They pretty much stay away from parking decks. But if you get a development where the first floor, maybe the first and the second floor, yeah. are businesses. A facade of businesses yep. in apartments, in, in and, apartments and then maybe the top two floors or three floors are parking. Yeah. Um, and is, do we also have to start looking up, you know, building up? Yes. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, we you know, do. You know, that, you know that place that, you know, where, where you had your bar, Railroad Tavern, yep. uh, back in the day? That, I mean, I, I would think that some, some developer would go in there and say, I'm going to buy this from you know who. Sandborn. Um, <laughs> And and say, but I'm going up, yep. and I'm going to put some 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 apartments, mixed use condos, whatever whatever it is. But I'm going up, and down here I'm going to rent out. Th you know, so. you know it's funny, and you don't have to go up when you think about building up. If you go down Roxbury Street and you look at the building on your left, that's seven stories. Mm -hmm. People think seven people. If you ask most people in Keene, they'll say if you ask what's your highest apartment building in Keene, they'd probably say uh, what, four stories. Now that one's seven stories, and it's not that high. Mm -hmm. So you can literally first floor businesses um, and then, or maybe even first floor street level parking yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But you're right. Um, but we know who owns that building. So um, we'll see. He's, you know, he's obviously got his legal problems right now. He might need some cash. So yeah. uh, no, I'm we'll just see. trying to, you know, you know, if you re reinvented, you know, and, and let, let downtown evolve a little bit, going up a little bit with some of these buildings isn't a bad thing. We've got we've got to do it because the population of Keene has been the same now for you know basically two decades now. Yeah. We like to say one decade, but it's basically been 22, 23,000 people now for twenty years. Yeah. Um, and the cost of everything goes up, but our population hasn't. So we, we definitely need to, um, you know, in in the the communities like Keene with strong downtowns survive. Yeah. People love the small downtowns. Can I can I ask you a question? Go in a different direction real quickly. Yeah. The whole um, casino thing. I know we got about three minutes. The whole yep. casino thing downtown. Where's that stand? What's the next step for that? Well, as we're talking here on Tuesday, tomorrow night it'll go back to PLD again, and they're talking about it. And you know, it's kind of funny, Chris, as we just talk about the owner of that building downtown, who's yeah. Sanborn. Yeah. You know, obviously he just got told by the state, you've got to unload your yeah. um, casino because you broke multiple yeah. laws. Yeah. Um, what we're seeing now, and what I'm hearing now is. There are so many unanswered questions about the casinos. It's like, could now these? What's happening with the casinos now? They, they were all intended to be mom and pop casinos, and what I'm hearing is you've got developers like Wonder Casino, and there's a few others in the state that are owned by a conglomerate out of Connecticut. There is concern now. Um, and they're not worried about an individual downtown Keene that might own one business putting in a small casino. I mean, somebody might have a problem with it. I don't. My concern would be, and I heard some other concerns, that uh, if one of these conglomerates from Connecticut comes in and says, you know what, we're buying a whole block downtown and we're going to build, we're going to make that whole block a casino. Does that fit Keene's structure? Well, so I, those I, are just, those are just some of the it's, questions. It's, it's, to me, to me it's, it's one of those situations where the state of New Hampshire has, has half-assed it. Excuse Completely. me. Excuse my Completely French. Completely half half-assed half it. it. And really... Having and, and and they can say that we have clear directives on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. And I get I get all that. I get it. And there seems to be one at least one bad apple in that group that's doing it. One bad apple has been caught so far. So far. Yeah. But 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 it's not about that. It's about you know you, what you just said. Can they come in and create this monster 
and, and I don't mean monster, but I mean bigger. And it's it's 15, like 20,000 square it's, feet. It's it's you know like like when Apple Applebee's came in here, they took a look at um, look at how to do their store, and they made it a little bit smaller to meet the, meet the market. And it's been a huge success. Yeah, for one, them. Of the one of the busiest, busiest in the ones in the country. Um, so it says somebody come in and say, we don't need this, but we need this, and this is bigger than what we have currently, kind of thing. Right. I don't know, but what I do know is this. I struggle with the idea of so you know first and foremost if you you know I don't know how I feel about the casino I don't care about that I have real concerns about the city stepping into this one and what's next what's next oh, so I, I can I I personally can't support sorry but I don't have a vote in it you do right um and and my struggle is I mean at the end of the day it's not going to have neon lights no. I mean it, I shouldn't say that but you know what I'm saying like this big <laughs> casino thing because you have ordinances that are going to say this is what you can do. So what is it really that that this person wants to do? This person wants to, owns a bar, and has food in that bar, and they want to add some gaming tables. Right. That's what it is. That, I, I, and, I, like and I, said, I don't know. And it was brilliant on on the, on the former owner of Wonders, um, uh, Jerry Goodell. Um, he he pointed out things. He put things, but they're they're factually shouldn't be even considered like you know casinos they always get bigger well wait a second we're talking about this we're not talking about that but he planted the seed so well, hey we're out of here we gotta go we'll, we'll stay tuned we'll be back next week to finish it up yep we're out of here the fire alarm's going off <laughs>